Welcome everyone to Expo North Digital Shorts. I'm very excited about our guest today. We have Nicole Vanderbilt, who is not only the UK's managing director for bookshop.org, but she was the VP for Etsy um, International. And you have over, Nicole, correct me if I'm wrong, but over two decades of experience focusing on um, consumer uh, behavior online. Is that That's true? Right. That is not only very helpful for the topic we're talking about today, but also really amazing. Can you tell me first a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so um, as you mentioned, I uh, currently am the UK Managing Director for Bookshop.org. We launched just in November of last year, so that's a relatively recent development. Um, but before I was at Bookshop.org, I spent eight years or almost eight years at Etsy running their international business. Um, and so those are just two pieces of a longer career, as you said, looking at how technology interacts with consumers. Um, I started off in the late 90s in New York working for a company called Jupiter Research, where it kind of seemed too good to be true, but I had this job where I just got to learn and write about the internet <laughs> at a time when not many people knew much about it. And that sort of um, set me off on this, on this journey. Wow, I have to say your two latest enterprises basically describe my user behavior online. I flip <laughs> between bookshops and Etsy. So um, before we dive into bookshops.org, can you just tell me um, the, there is a clear theme going on, I think, with your interest in terms of the way we use online. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I also spent some time at Google earlier in my career. And what I would say um, really won me over there was the idea that technology could provide a level playing field. So a small business could be advertising right next to a giant corporate on Google. And I think that's the sort of the continued theme in the work that I've done since then is helping small creative businesses who would otherwise maybe be hurt by technology actually be helped by technology. And, you know, these, whether you're an Etsy seller drawing custom pet portraits or you're an independent bookshop owner, you don't really get into these businesses because you want to program a website. Um, you don't get into these businesses because you want to wait online at the post office necessarily. And so what, you know, what I've done in these past two roles is try to really figure out how do we create technology that makes it just as easy for a consumer to buy from these, from a Etsy seller or from an independent bookshop. And also how do we create tools that allow those business owners to spend time on the things that they enjoy and that make them special? Yeah, yeah. can I ask, because both of them are platforms that attract a really diverse group of businesses. Every bookshop's a little different. Clearly Etsy, every craft's a little different. Do you believe there's strength in numbers? I think certainly when it comes to the consumer mindset. So, you know, make no mistake, there are loads of places where small businesses are prospering online. Like Shopify does a beautiful job of letting you set up your own website. Um, and there is definitely something to be said for that. But I think at the end of the day, when a customer only has so many things that they can remember, and it's helpful that if you want to buy a special baby gift for a friend, to know that you could go to Etsy and get quite a wide choice of small creative businesses to choose from. And similarly with Bookshop, I think what we found is during the lockdowns, a lot of people really wanted to support independent bookshops and they tried really hard, but with the best will in the world, not many of them have very um, like nationwide uh, brand awareness. So if we can create a place that people turn to when they think about buying a book online, just simply that um, is shared across the bookshops. I think that's helpful to consumers making a, a good choice. Now let's let's look at bookshop.org. You guys have a really great quote on your website, which basically is you guys are the rebel force <laughs> against the kind of the empire Amazon. And I love that. So can you describe just the kind of general spirit behind bookshop.org and how you use the platform? Yeah, so the company was founded by a guy named Andy Hunter, who's based in the US and who is a publisher himself and also a co-founder of um, Electric Literature and Lit Hub. So um, definitely has feet both firmly in the book publishing world and in the technology world. And he basically looked around and saw how fast, even before the pandemic, Amazon's market share was growing. And even if you put aside 
which I don't think we should, but if you put aside the way that Amazon behaves, you know, the, the criticisms people have of them, just anybody having the, the size market share they do in the book selling world is, can't be healthy. Um, and so it was founded with the principle, the laser-like focus of trying to support independent bookshops by giving consumers, you know, sort of as I alluded to earlier, an easy way to remember and to go buy a book online that would also be supporting their independent bookshops. And the reason we think that matters, like why, why worry about independent bookshops is because we think they're so vital to culture. So they both provide a physical space in our communities where people can go you know, wander around in a books, uh, in with books, spend unstructured time discovering new things. But they also, you know, when you talk to anybody in the the publishing industry, you will hear time and again that the indies make the biggest difference in what actually sells, being more distributed and diverse. You know, Amazon's business, for better or for worse, the algorithm um, lends itself to a hits business. So you're either in the top hundred or you're kind of not. And the indies make a big difference. And so we think. Supporting the indies will make our communities stronger and it will make publishing more diverse. I think that's great too. It also values the books and the author. I, I remember when yes. my book came out, they, I think it took three days to find not only proof copies being sold on Amazon, but it already being discounted three days after it was published. So, I, you know, you go to bookshop.org, you guys not only have a gorgeous website and it's so beautiful and easy to use. Um, but it is, it values the books. The images are great of the books and the bookshops. It's really wonderful. Oh, thanks. That's nice to hear. That's where I think just, you know, Andy would say this himself. We're at the very beginning of trying to make that be true. You know, we put our sort of first, you know, oar in the water in terms of what we think we can create. But um, I hopefully you'll see us continue to build on that and, and make it a place where even more of the bookshops and the authors and the publishers shines through. For lockdown, we're going through such a weird time. I know audiobooks are on the rise. People are kind of ordering more books. We have time more at home to read. Um, do you find it's made an impact on bookshop.org? Yeah, I mean, it's so, our, we've had a really great start in the UK in particular, and in the US, we had a really good um, 2020. And it's really hard to know what's behind that. I mean, obviously people haven't been able to go into indie bookshops the way that they would like. And so that's making that people are buying things online. Uh, the second trend I think is that people are realizing that where they spend their money matters. You know, this was sort of, people were alive to this before the pandemic, but now, you know, everyone has an awareness that the high street is gonna not look like they want it to unless they make some choices about how they spend their money. And then as you allude to the last piece is I think books themselves, irrespective of where you buy them have become quite a good um, form of entertainment. It's very you know, relatively accessible in terms of price point. It feels like it's both entertaining and enriching in a way. So it's like maybe a bit more guilt-free than some other things you could, you could buy. Um, so yeah, all three of those things have definitely lent themselves to our business doing well. And I saw that you guys also, not only, I don't want to give the um, impression that's only bookshops that can get involved. You guys have an affiliate program. That's where, right. Where, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so some of this is, you know, if we have the bookshops in mind, some of this is about winning back some of the share of market that Amazon has so effectively um, cornered with their own affiliate program. And some of it is also making sure that we provide a great revenue stream to people who create um, interest in books, irrespective of who they are, whether they're an individual or a big media company or a book blogger or an author. You know, I think one of the most lovely things about Bookshop is that we have been working with authors to get lists of books that they have loved or that they have influenced their latest title. And there's just such a spirit of generosity in that. You know, it's this it's not just going out and like pounding the pavement about your own work. It's really recognizing the value of the work from your peers or, you know, in some cases, older work, backlist work. Um, and I really love that about the conversations we have because it's not transactional, you know, there's a real community around that. And a sense of sharing, which is yeah. really, really wonderful. I, 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 I do love that too. And so for I'm aware that Expo North has a range of people in the arts watching this. So we have people on crafts, um, music and film and you name it. 
and looking at creative industries and how they can utilize kind of the user experience online. A lot of people are focusing right now on content creation. So it's not just about the platform you're making and it's not just about the kind of access you're offering. It's also about the content. So are you guys looking into podcast videos, especially because if you have an affiliate program or do you feel that you can make your focus too wide? Oh, that's such a good question. I mean, certainly the, the, our affiliate partners are amazing content creators and we think that will give um, quite a lot of content that gives you ways into books. So we have, you know, your book to the really lovely podcast by Daisy Buchanan. We have the backlisted podcast with Andy Miller. They are putting their book lists up from their episodes because they've had this amazing content that, that generates an interest in the titles discussed. So certainly we're excited to support the content creators that are out there. Um, you know, I think that they're in a way, we're, we're trying to maximize as many ways as we can get people into books. And so one of the things that we've been thinking about is how do we, as a platform, raise the voices of the booksellers? So I don't think you'll probably ever hear us talk about books on a podcast. That's deeply uninteresting. But could we take, you know, Fleur Sinclair from Seven Oaks, or could we take, um, you know, these amazing booksellers who are so inspiring in terms of running these businesses and have such a strong point of view on reading and, and the titles that are coming out and help them seek a broader audience? Probably. And so you, you'll see us maybe experiment with how do we help them get their voices out there a bit more. That's so lovely. And I have to ask, because I'm sitting here in Scotland's National Book Town, where I think the majority of the bookshops are used books. Do you, do you think at all you're going to be also expanding into the used book market or is that a totally different kettle of fish? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a totally different kettle of fish. I would say never say never, you know, we, we, um, we launched with a very uh, lean proposition in some ways, which is that the only way to sell something on Bookshop today is through gardeners. So they are our single source of supply. And over time, we will look to expand that in other ways too. You know, how do we help more self-published authors get onto the platform in a meaningful way? Or, you know, we don't have many Welsh titles yet because we haven't integrated with them yet. Um, and so, would used books be potentially a source of supply in future? Possibly, but I, it's not, you know, toward the top of our list of priorities, I'd say. That said, we have very much encouraged and do have quite a few secondhand bookshops on the platform. So they're able to actually generate, in fact, I think that's one of the great things about bookshop is bookshops are able to generate revenue for themselves outside their typical specialty. So we've had feedback that like children's bookstores are now selling titles to parents as well, or, you know, gay is the word is a, is now selling titles that aren't just within their specialty of the LGBTQ world. Um, so yeah, the, we're very much hoping to embrace the, the secondhand bookshop community, but we probably, you probably won't see secondhand titles on our site soon. That's lovely. That's a, that's a, that's a really good answer. And I hate to do this because we are kind of running out of time, but um, a couple of questions for folks who are um, in the creative industries looking to maximize online. When you guys were starting bookshop.org, what were some of the kind of main questions that you had in your mind as you were building this? What were some of the things kind of guiding you that you think other people might want to think about? Oh, I think um, if I've understood your question, Accurately. I mean, I think one of the things that we asked ourselves was where is where is interest in books or our thing being generated online already? And how could we support that was, you know, a big question that we had. So in, you know, I think in most people's world, but in our world, certainly social media plays a really big role in, in people discovering titles and writers and readers connecting and, you know, that that broader community. So I think, you know, one of the questions we had was how could we really make the most of that? Um, and I don't know if this gets at your answers, your question or not, but you know, one of the other things that I think is been really interesting while at Etsy and at Bookshop that we've asked ourselves both is at both places is how can we build a business model that is generative for everybody involved, okay. right? So how do we make sure our interests are aligned that like when the platform is making money, the people that make the platform exist at all make That's a so good, sad. you know, 
have all the as much of the value as is possible um and what are the little decisions and and structures and like safeguards we need to put in place to make sure that we keep that very much front of mind that's really really wonderful well I wish you guys so much success because already it, there's so many layers to the concept. There's the, there's, you can order books and then it benefits all these bookshops. You can, you know, target a particular bookshop and want to interact with them. You can be an author or a book fan and be an affiliate and support books and bookshops in general. And it's so easy to navigate and it's lovely. I, I will, we'll include links below, but I really, um, it's really exciting what you're doing. I think it's what, and there's interactive map. Mm -hmm. too, which is, which is great. Um, before you. we go, I have two, two more questions. So um, what's the next challenge for you guys in the future that you're trying to tackle as an aspect of the website? Is it navigating through COVID? Is it looking to expand into different countries? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the main thing for us, like any e-commerce company, is how do we keep um, making the experience as easy and convenient for our customers as possible. We're up a, against a pretty high standard of um, speed and uh, I guess predominantly speed, but so how do we make sure that we are not playing, you know, trying to play the same game as Amazon, but providing our own special thing and yet living up to just the table stakes required of customers these days. So, you know, some of it is not that sexy, but like, how do we make checkout 10 times easier on our website, for example? Um, we will be focusing on a lot of that stuff because if we can make it easier for customers, they will buy more books and that will be good for the bookshop. So part of my answer is that. I think the other is certainly like you allude to audiobooks is there are parts of the industry where I think the independent bookshops have felt frustrated that they couldn't get their hands on it. Yes, and audiobooks is a great example. So we'll be, we certainly will be exploring that. That, oh, that's that's good to hear. And also, you know, one positive aspect, I guess, of Amazon is that they're just begging for people to disrupt the um, the industry, which is what you're doing. <laughs> so in a in a way, they have elicited your exist the the opportunity for your existence, and they they make a very good foil so that you keep on your toes and you keep on making oh, sure. Oh, for sure. Make no mistake, I have a lot of respect for how much they've achieved. Not mm -hmm. necessarily how they've achieved it, but they've they've changed the way that we. Oh, okay. uh, buy things for sure. Yeah, completely. Okay. So last question. We always end Expo North Digital Starts with this. Can I ask you for a bit of advice? It could be anything. Uh, maybe at some point your career mentor gave this to you. Maybe you gave the advice to someone that you, you use every day, something that you feel that's worth sharing with others. Yeah. I mean, I guess two things come to mind in the, I, you know, I've been fortunate to work with some really amazing people in my career. And two lessons I would say I learned. One is that when you're working in a creative industry, it's there, you're not for want of ideas. And so the big challenge is to bring focus to what you're doing. And that sounds very sort of motherhood and apple pie, but it is, there's a real art to being able to keep focused on the things that are gonna have the highest impact on the work that you're doing. Um, and that's no mean feat when you're in a creative industry where there's loads of things you could do. Um, and then the other one I would say is that, you, you know, I feel like in a funny way, in the Anglo-Saxon world anyway, we're sort of taught earlier on that knowing the answers is the, is the thing that matters. And I, the piece of advice that I got that was so helpful, especially as I became more of a team lead is, knowing how to answer, ask the right questions or ask good questions is really, I think, helpful to people who are leaders, but also just generally in your own work is spending less time trying to get to the answer and more time trying to think about what what is the question or what are the good questions. That's uh, wonderful. That would be my advice. Both of those things are really important, I think, and they, they, um, they require you to use a little bit of intuition as well, both of them, yeah. <laughs> a little restraint. It was a little strain. Now, hopefully, all that, all that gets better with experience as well. Um, Nicole, thank you so much for joining Expo North Digital Shorts. I hope one day we can get you to come to the event of Expo North in Inverness when we host it again. But until then, it's lovely to see you online. Thank you so much. Okay, take care.